Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Callie. This is my channel. It's a really random channel and today is no different because I want to talk about stress. <clears throat> stress, okay? Um, this is actually from a really close personal experience. I want to, you know, talk about how dangerous stress is for the body if it is prolonged and not dealt with, okay? Um, first, if you're new to this channel, make sure you take a second, hit that subscribe button, all right? So you can stay updated on whatever comes here because like I said, it's random and you don't want to miss out. You definitely don't want to miss out. So hit that button for me, please. Okay, anyway, so um, I do appreciate everyone who is with me, everyone who's been with me, everyone who's new and just joined. I hope I can you know, make the most of this channel and reach everybody in different ways. So, um, somebody very, 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 very close to me, very close, in her 30s, just had a mini heart attack, all right? A mini stroke is what they call it. And not a whole lot, you know, was going on besides a lot of stress, a lot of stress, okay? And, um... Basically, just even on a, a regular day, I mean, this is a girl in like 30, early 30s, 31. Um, this is a girl who went out to get a cup of coffee. By the time she got home, she was kind of like lost consciousness. Her body went numb. She kind of was not seizing out, but kind of seizing out. And, you know, she went to the hospital. Everything was normal. But they were like, yeah, you just had a mini stroke. And, um, you know, it it, it kind of came as a shock to everybody. And so, you know, as I'm talking to her, trying to figure out, you know, what what was happening in the days before this, what was going on that could have led to her body's reaction like this. And one, she was dehydrated all right so let this be a reminder to drink extra water because you're speaking of because you, your body basically cannot send oxygen to your brain well enough when you don't have enough water um so she was dehydrated but something else that was going on was she was having like a lot of stress in her personal life her relationship you know bickering back and forth with her partner arguing getting upset about things and um, basically her body, you know, got to the point where it was just like, you know, I've had enough and it, it reacted in that way. And, you know, with me teaching body communication, I always tell my clients that when something like that happens with the body, it is the body's way of communicating, hey, something needs to change. You know, your body will give you subtle cues up until the moment. It's like, you know what? No, it needs change. Um, and so her body was definitely at a breaking point. It said something has to change. And, you know, as, as I'm talking to her, as I'm talking to her, you know, we're finding out that most of her time is stressed. She wakes up very unhappy, you know, because it's hard. It's sometimes hard to, to be here, to be in a body, you know, stuck in the restrictions of a body in this plane, which can seem really harsh at times. And so, um, just kind of having a perspective that is not fun to live in. You know, if you're waking up feeling miserable and, you know, wishing that you weren't here, your days aren't going to be full of joy and happiness. They're going to be hard. You're going to struggle through them. All right. Let me drink water. Okay. So your days are going to struggle with them. You know, most of the time it's going to lead to a depression or just feeling of, you know, complete helplessness. And what I'm seeing with not even just her, but with people is that the default setting for living life is stressed out, tense, uncomfortable, unhappy, you know, feeling like everything is wrong and nothing is right. You know, and there's a lot of things that contribute to this. You know, one is having social media, having other people to constantly look at and compare your life to or, you know, compare yourself to and other things like not really taking care of our body, not taking time to 
decompress and check in with our body, see what's going on, spend some time with our body through any form, modality. You know, there's yoga, tai chi, qigong, body communication, which if you don't feel like you can do the physical parts of any of those other things, something like body communication is a soft, gentle, subtle way to communicate with your body, you know, start a dialogue and really collaborate with your body. And so you guys, you know, the mind and the body can get on the same page because when the body's being neglected, the mind is kind of running on a rampant, you know, running rampant, just doing what it wants, thinking crazy thoughts, bringing more stress because you have these crazy thoughts that make you feel shame and guilt and just uncomfortable. And that makes it, you know, more stress for your body when you start feeling those emotions. And it's just like a vicious cycle that keeps going and going and going. And it comes to a point where, you know, something she said to me was, I don't know, like, when I get too stressed. Because what was happening was she was feeling a lot of physical stress from the mind and just day to day. And then, you know, in her relationship, something would come up or just someone would say anything. Even a loud noise would be enough to make you really irritable because when you're stressed out, your body is very irritable and very sensitive. So she was snapping at her partner, which it was causing fights. It was causing, you know, tension between the two of them. And she said to me, I don't know when I'm at that point when I'm too stressed. It just seems like I'm always stressed. And so, you know, something that I'm realizing is we have to be, you know, it's not about realizing, hey, I'm stressed, then de-stressing. It's about being proactive and doing things that de-stress before we reach the breaking point to where we lash out or till we have a meltdown or fall into a deep depression, you know. We have to be checking in with ourselves daily. And um, I pulled some cards on the matter. And basically, it's kind of along the lines of, you know, what, what I told her is change doesn't happen overnight. It's you realize there's a problem and then you start to do things differently. Every day you try to do a little better than you did yesterday. And there'll be times where you're doing really good and then you just fall off. And that's okay. You know, it's hard to break habits. Habits we've had for years and years take time. So really be gentle with yourself. Um, you know, we're learning from our mistakes so then we can move forward. And the next card really talked about enthusiasm, right? An enthusiastic approach to a new adventure, right? Waking up with the day and I asked her, I said, what? what is so wrong that waking up is so hard? You know, like what, what's going on? You know, she's, she's having, you know, people would say she's fortunate in most aspects of her experience, but why is she waking up miserable? Why is there that perception that says, man, I don't want to be here. And she was like, I, I don't really know, you know, life is going okay. And, you know, everything is going well. And I think it's just people forgot how to be enthusiastic, how to have joy. And if you want to learn, go hang out with a kid. If you have kids, hang out with your kids. Those kids are so enthusiastic about everything because they're happy to be here. They're like, whoa, I'm in a body. Look at this. I'm in a body in a physical world. How cool is this? You know, I can explore and do things and touch things, you know. And it's like we as adults need to remember that this should be a fun adventure you know we have so many things that really contribute to the demise of the mind and feeling just negative and shitty all the time and really it's because we forget we forget you know who we are what we're doing here we forget that and there's a lot of external stimuli and things coming at us saying be miserable, be unhappy, you need this to be happy, you need that, shouldn't you feel guilty about this? You know, a lot of stuff contributing to us feeling so crappy. And, you know, it's it's not even like it's one person's fault, it's collectively going on for everybody. And so um, one thing she mentioned was, you know, this, this feeling of alone. And it's funny because I did a, a weekly blind spot reading, all right? Just telling us, you know, what it is we need to see that we're not seeing. 
And the card was isolation. And most of the time, it's us isolating ourselves out of fear of isolation. You know, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment. We go ahead and do that to ourselves before anything even happens. And that's what I told her, you know, you're abandoning yourself, you know, being so worried about wanting to be with someone else. Like, what about you? Like, what do you enjoy? What do you love? What do you want to do and experience? Because while everyone else is having their experience, we're worried about why no one wants to have an experience with us. But why is it that we can't have our own experience, you know? And that's why the last card was about craftsmanship, successful collaborations, and admiration. And I think with that, it's really, you know, doing something until you're good at it. And then maybe finding other people who want to do the same thing and admiring the fact that you have something you love and want to do, you know, admire yourself enough to be like, wow, I really appreciate this, appreciate this about myself because we're all made unique. We're all different. And there's something that you're supposed to do, that you're meant to do, that you're really good at. And if you don't remember, get a pen and get a paper and start writing until it comes out. It may take a day, it may take a minute, it may take a couple days, but just keep going at it, you know, don't give up. And so I really, you know, just wanted to come on here and talk about how stress is so, so hard on the body. You know, I think a little stress to get us moving, to get us motivated is good, but when stress becomes the default mode, stress becomes how we wake up every day, how we experience every moment, that's when we really need to take a step back and be like, okay, how do I start from the beginning? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Get a piece of paper out anyway. Start writing down your thoughts, your feelings. You know, start being proactive. Connecting with your body, even if it's just for a couple minutes. I'll post a video below this, what is body communication. And it's very simple. It's just tuning in. Okay, how's my, how's my eyes feel? How's my ears, my forehead, you know, my hair even, my shoulders, my arms, my organs, you know. If you tune in, you will definitely get that communication back. You'll know it. Sometimes our body speaks in pain. And so, you know, just knowing how to listen and even just taking the time to start that dialogue goes a long way. A little love goes a long way, all right? And when we're talking about our body, there should be no love spared because this is what we walk around in. This is how we experience life. All right. So I just wanted to come on here and, you know, share that with you. I've been kind of self self isolating a little lately, which is why you didn't see me for two days, but I'm back and I'm going to stay at it, stay trying to be connected and be myself and just, you know, show the world that even though life is crazy, you can have a good experience. You can have joy. You can feel okay inside. You know, it's a choice sometimes that you need to tune into when you realize things aren't as bad as what your mind will have you believe. So I hope you guys enjoy your day. I hope you guys enjoy your week. Um, again, if you're new to the channel and this video resonated with you on some level, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all of you so much and I will see you guys next time.